Christ. I have faith in him that whatever this new adventure is, I'm going to be with him. Amen. So this is what blessed me this week in reading this. And this is what it says. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter Amen. the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, God. By a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God yes. with a sincere heart yes. and with a full assurance mm -hmm. that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us yes. from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unservants to the hope we profess. For we, for he who promised is faithful. Yes. And we know that by the word of God. Yes. Whatever he says, mm -hmm. he will do. Yes. And that blessing yes. is, and I just want to share that with you. God bless you. May he have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. In Amen. Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. to get hung up on the tree. He had to go a long way and they beat him and they basically tortured him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They stuck him in the side. They pierced him in the side. And there were so many things he endured for us that we could be free, that we could have a chance and have a privilege to life and that being eternal life. I mean, we, we should be joyous and thankful for all that he has done and all that he is doing. Yes. He's an on-time God. Yes, yes. He is. And he's faithful. Yes, he is. And as Sister Brenda, Minister Brenda was reading those, that yes. scripture, it was just blessing me over and over. Yes. Because I was thinking, just God is in, on my mind about the sacrifice yes. that he made for us. Yes. And I was thinking there are many things that we sacrificed in life and uh, one of the endeavors that my husband and I, and I know some of you also were in school and even our bishop was taking some classes. And it's a sacrifice. Yes, sure it is. You know, you, you put aside some of the things that you could have done or could have went to events, birthday parties, celebrations, and I know we're not doing a lot of large gatherings right now, but we've been in school for a little bit, and you're thinking of all of those things that I could have done. Mm -hmm. I wanted to watch this, that, or the other. I wanted to maybe just take a little vacation, but the sacrifice is, no, I have some studies to do, yeah. and I have to be focused, and I have to be attentive to what I'm doing. And I was, I'm, I mean, there's so many levels when you think about just school alone that are a sacrifice. Those that are not in school, you can stay up as late as you want. And some still stay up late if you're in school because you may be studying or doing other things. But the point I'm trying to make is it's a sacrifice. Yes, it is. It's a sacrifice even as parents. Mm -hmm. You know, you raise your children. You maybe not uh, put things on yourself that you would put on them. You know, maybe you need uh, to a new shirt, but no, I'm going to give that to my child before I give it to him. You know, whatever that sacrifice may be, you make it because you love your children. And that's what God did for us. We're his children. And he loved us unconditionally. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the different forms of love, agape love, and how he just loves us. It's unconditional. No, it's unmatched. We, we are very conditional people at times. 
that you, you get on my nerves, I'm going to chew. You know, that's how we all are sometimes. Shouldn't be. Lord, forgive us and help us to grow and to be what you want us to be. Amen? Amen. 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 He's a faithful God. There's filial love. That's our brotherly love that we're supposed to love toward one another and make sure that we forgive one another. That's a big one. Amen? Amen. 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 There's eros love. And that's between the husband and wife and all the sexual love. But we thank God for that agape love and how he just yes. loved us. Thank God, I remember Minister Brenda, I believe, reading the scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave. And we, we know there's many scriptures about God's and Christ's love toward us. So I'm just thankful to the Lord. I'm just in awe of his goodness and his mercy toward us. Uh, thank God, even as uh, Minister Diana mentioned, the cold, cold weather in our prayer, we are protected, yes. we are covered. We have nice homes we can go in and have heat. Our automobiles have heat. Have you ever had an automobile? The heat wasn't working right. Oh, yes. But I thank God. Thank God. We have vehicles that run efficiently and effectively, and they are able to get us from point A to point B. But again, they're man made materials. And I look forward to a day when we're going to be in heaven. No more tears, no more sorrow, yes. no more pain. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory, I look forward to it. This is not our home. Yes. We're pilgrims passing through. Yes. How many believe that today? Amen. How many are excited about we have a home that's beyond this yes. earth? Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. He still blesses us, though. Even down here on earth, we're still blessed. Amen. Everything that we need. toward us here just shortly we'll be in our praise and worship portion of our service so we want you to praise God with us. How many come to praise God? We're here we can as well. Amen. He's a good God. Yes. When I think of the goodness of Jesus yes. and all he's done, there's so many things your soul can cry out. But yes. Hallelujah is one of them. Lord yes. I just thank you yes. for allowing me to get through another week. Yes. Yes. I thank you that we have food on our tables and our refrigerators. Thank you. I'm yes. thankful. Yes. Thank you. Thankful yes. for Absolutely. all that he has done and all that mm -hmm. he's going to do. He's blessed us over the highways and byways. Yes. And thank you, God. Just to get where we're going. I'm yes. thankful for our job. Amen. I'm thankful for the people that I work with. Mm -hmm. I work with a good group of people, and I'm thankful for yes. that. Yes. It's not always that situation. It wasn't always that way. I remember looking for a lady, and uh, whew, she gave me what they would call the blues. Mm. But, you know, I prayed for her, and God helped me out of that situation. Yes. He helped me go through it. We do want sometimes to wish our way through things, but God says, no, you got to endure some stuff. Mm. you got to suffer just a little while. Mm. Hallelujah. It all brings out is pure gold. Yes. How many want to be pure gold? Amen. Yes, That's Thank worth you, something. Yes. Do Amen. It, do it, do You've it. been through the fire. Yes, You've been Lord. through the rain. Yes. You've been through yes. heartache and pain. Yes. But God, God, He's our deliverer. Yes. Thank you. He's our sustainer. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, even when you're going through, Thank He'll you, bless Lord. you. Yes, He will. To endure. Yes, He does. Yes. I was thinking about that hope message and how mm. we have hope. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be down and upset or depressed yes. or filled with anxiety. Sure, those things want to come, and you, you can get a little uneasy yes. at times, but we serve a God that's bigger than any mm -hmm. issue, yes. bigger than any problem. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever it is, it is you mm -hmm. know, God is able to deal yes, with you and yes, help you through it. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I just yes. honor him today. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. As our Lord, as our yes, Savior. Yes, thank you. Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. As the praise team is getting ready to come on up. We just yes. thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. All you've done. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Just praise him just for a little while. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, thank you,
Yes, Lord. Lord. We lift you up. Yes. We know that there is nobody mm -hmm. like you in yes, all Lord. the earth. Thank yes, you. thank you, Lord. There is nobody. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. We bless you. Yes, thank you, Lord. You're a strong tower. Yes, you are. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Jehovah needs. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being our peace. Yes. Thank you, Lord. When things are up and up in a ring, God, we just thank you, Lord, for having you just bless us. Thank you, Lord. Sleep at night. Thank you, Lord. You're an anchor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, Jesus. I love you and I adore you. Mm -hmm. I lift Thank you up. You. I'm yes. magnified. I want to make you big. Thank you, Lord. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you are a big God. Jesus. He's a Thank God. big thing. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He spoke. Mm -hmm. He just said, "Peace be still." Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. He just breathed the breath. Yes. The stars were in space. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Ooh, Jesus. Yes. 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 Yes, thank you, Lord. And I'm thankful mm -hmm. just to know him. Yes. Yes. To have a relationship. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. Take the pain away. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Place it yes. in joy Woo. and peace. Yeah. Gladness. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Gladness. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Pray for us to be sing unto the Lord mm -hmm. as we worship him. Hallelujah. Yes, us. absolutely. Jesus. Yes, Lord, you and are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy. Yes, worthy, worthy, worthy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We just praise you, Lord. Yes, you are so worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We just bless you. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you. Let's give the Lord another yes. hand. Praise you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glad to be in God's service one more time. Thank God for each and every one. Yes, thank you, Lord. Christian, we can get you to turn down the heat just a night. We'll be ready to go. Thank you. Oh, so it's nice and warm. Nice yes, and warm. it is. Yeah, I thank God for warm. Yes, it is. On cold days. Yes. Mm -hmm. Going over hungry clothes. Absolutely. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank God for every good and perfect gift. Yes. It comes from you. Yes. Just ask as if you worship the Lord with us in your own way. Yes. Consider how good God has been yes. to you. Yes. Not your sister or your brother yes. or your mother or your father. Yes. But how good God has been to you personally. Yes. I Thank think you. we find something to give God praise for. Absolutely, yes. yes. Hey, uh, we got the Super Bowl coming and <laughs> folks will be acting all kinds of crazy. But we understand that we yes. can get excited about what God has done and what he's doing. Yes. What he's going to do. Yes. Amen. The Bible says hope does not disappoint. Because God's love has been shed abroad in our hearts by the power of the Holy Ghost. We probably got the Holy Ghost this morning. Yes, Lord, the Holy Spirit living and working in us. So uh, we come uh, not downhearted or downtrodden, not with weak knees, but with straight knees. Yes. With an encouraged heart and a mind set on worshiping and loving the Lord. Yes. Amen. I woke up this morning with the Lord on my mind. Yes. Just thinking yes. about how good he has yes. been to me. Yes. Sometimes it's good to reflect yes. just a little bit. Yes. And look how far God has brought me yes. from yes. now. Yes. Uh, he told Israel when they came out to, to not forget mm -hmm. the Lord thy God that had brought them out of the land of yes. Egypt. Yes. Amen. Brought them out of a physical place of enslavement. Yes. But I found out through my study that we were all slaves to sin yes. one day. Yes. And God set us free by His Spirit. Woo! Hallelujah. And although I may not be perfect, I have much to rejoice about today. I'm not what I used to be today. The power of the Spirit is working in me today. Hallelujah. To help me overcome, to lift my heavy heart, give me peace and joy in time of trouble. Uh, we just want to tune your hearts and your lips to praise this morning. That's all. It gets you ready to give God the fruit of your yes, lips. The Bible Lord. says in Psalms 150, let everything, yes. somebody say everything. 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 everything that have breath, praise yes, the Lord. Now, 
I don't know how the sparrow gives praise, but God said he ought to give God praise. I don't know how the lion worships, but he ought to give God praise. Come on, somebody. But I know English, and I know the word hallelujah. It's the highest praise this morning. We know that we can reach the throne of heaven through worship. I was not focusing on me, but on the God of our salvation this morning who has power, who has redeemed us, who has loved us and cared for us this morning. Oh, yes. We give God praise this morning. We ask, as always, that you just worship with us. Worship with us. Worship with us. I can't do it for you, and you can't do it for me. But you can get it done yourself. Amen. And I can give God some praise, too. So pat your feet, clap your hands, open your lips. And give God's praise this morning. Let's give him one more hand clap. Yes.
if you know God has set you free this morning. Somebody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say I'm free this morning. Oh, yes, we thank God this morning. We are grateful this morning. God has cut us from the body of the sin. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God loves a grateful heart. I love a grateful heart.
to minister with my husband yes. and sing with my husband. Yes. Hallelujah. Rejoice with my husband. Hey. And I thank God yes. that he brought that to pass. Yes. Yes. When you're praying the prayers, you don't know exactly how the Lord is going to bless you. Yes. Amen. He's going to bless you. It's going to be real good. Yes. Amen. 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 So keep praying. Yes. Keep trusting. Yes. And keep standing on the promises of God. Yes. He'll never fail. Oh, yeah. He never has. He never will. He can't. He can't fail. Amen? Amen. Do you think that? Amen. Hallelujah. There has to be something that God has done for you. Think about it right now. That he answered. He came by. Maybe even just a thought. And God came by. Amen? Amen. I'm so thankful for him and what he's done and what he's doing. Yes, he is. children, mm-hmm. and I'm thankful for that as well. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. He loves me. I'm thankful for that. Yes. Amen. Yes. He mm-hmm. provides yes. for our home. I'm thankful for that. Yes. What did the song say? I'm grateful. Yes. I'm just grateful. I'm yes. just grateful. Yes. Amen. Unto yes. him. And I bless his holy name. And so at this time, we want to hear the word of God. How many are excited about yes. the word? Yes. 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 It's living. Amen. Amen. It's bread. Yes. It's yes. 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 Chew on it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Chew on it all week. There's yes. things that's messages yes. that we've all heard down through the time. But I was just thinking about one of the messages that he preached about just his grace is sufficient. Yes. God's grace is sufficient. Yes. And so at this time we're gonna have Pastor John come. Amen. Let's hear what we receive by saying amen. Amen. Amen.
Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, mm -hmm. casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. This is my focus verse. But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after ye have suffered a while, may you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading. Yes. Understanding his word. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, the word of the Lord is a light to the Christian life. That's why we come, that's why we study, that's why we hold it dear. Yes. We value the truth in God's word to be true, mm -hmm. above any pedagogy or any educational program or any thought form or pattern. Yes. But we regard God's word to be uh, the fundamental uh, doctrine of true theology, mm -hmm. uh, far above Confucius or oh, yeah. Darwinism That's or right. any other proposed form of knowledge we regard the Bible yes. above all. Amen. Even above the man who is teaching it, the woman who loves it. Right. The Lord said, I exalt my word above my name. Yes. Yes. That's yes. a high place. Yes. The Bible says that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and yes. comes to confess in Philippians 2 mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. But yet he has regarded his word even greater than that. I, I think it's something important about a person's word. Yes. yes. A person tells you something mm -hmm. and they actually do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate friends who are good for their word. No, that's yeah. People we can count on. Absolutely. Um, it's a rough thing to be down to number three on the call list and be calling somebody that we know we didn't really want to call. <laughs> so I missed the first two. I wanted the first two, but I'm on three and three is not reliable. Yeah. They might be here, they might not be here. <laughs> Ain't no telling what reason. <laughs> but in God's word, we have a surety. We have a sure foundation. Uh, we have not only that, but we have the blueprint of who I am. Uh, the psalmist says he, he knows our thoughts are far off. He said, well, I just thought it. God knew before I thought it, but I was going to think. I read somewhere that he said the hairs on our head are numbered. Yes. It would be one day to be counted. No, he said they're numbered. If hair 572 comes off your head, God understands. Yes. Uh, he is devoted to the believer like no one else could be devoted to you. Amen. Far above your mother's devotion or your father's devotion, yes. your husband or your wife's devotion, that the Bible said he is faithful. Yes. Not only that, but he lets us know that great is his faithfulness. Yes. Uh, we read in Revelation that written on his thigh is faithful. Yeah. He is faithful and true. Can I get a amen? Amen. amen? So we regard God's word as, as paramount in our lives. Yes. Uh, when we look to instruction, we want to know how to live our lives. Mm -hmm. When we need understanding, yes. when we need encouragement, yes. 
uh, when we need joy, we can go to Isaiah and read the wonderful songs of Isaiah in the gospel and the good news about Christ. We can go back into the word of God yes. and find his promises and find out that God has never left an empty promise. Never. That he has and will fulfill every promise to the church. Can I get an amen, amen this morning? Amen. So when we come to the New Testament book of 1 Peter, we understand that those promises have not been shaken. Uh, that God's promise is true. His word is true. So we pray today for some understanding in his word. I want to speak to just for a few minutes under the idea, after you have suffered a while. Yes. Somebody say suffer. 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 After you have suffered a while. Today, uh, in, in general and in life, people don't like to suffer anything. Yes. Um, when, before we get to work on Monday, we're talking about Friday. Yep. <laughs> we don't want to deal with a work week. Healthy, strong, nice cars to drive, and don't want to go to work a lot of times. Uh, we drive ourselves away from the things that we should ought to suffer to make ourselves healthy. Yes. Uh, my wife, this week, she joined some sort of yoga class, but uh, she, she did so. She did so, uh, and it was something she realized was a commitment. It was an endeavor, something that she was going to have to endure. Uh, there were many other things, I think, that she would enjoy doing rather than suffering uh, this Jesus. program. But they understood that there's something uh, more valuable on the other side of suffering. Yes. Um, when you understand in your Christian life that everything in life, and not just your Christian faith, but the things that we want to achieve in life often lay out a pattern in front of them of suffering. Yes. And when the Bible talks about suffering, it isn't always talking about physical pain. Yeah. It's not talking about sweated tears. Yeah. A lot of times, remember Jesus said, suffer the children. Yeah. He, is allow, he is saying, let us allow some things to happen yeah. in your life. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we understand suffering is not always some physical pain God wants to put us through. He's not a mean and nasty God. No. You know, there are many of those who say that the Bible is a bloody book and, and that a loving God uh, wouldn't have bloodshed. But I read where he sent David to kill a whole yes. lot of folks. That's yes. right. Get amen. He amen. Amen. saw from his throne because he wouldn't kill the folks that he that David was willing to kill. Right. Uh, we got to kill some things in our lives. Jesus. Right. 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 Jesus. Right. 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 But nevertheless, that's not my focus this morning. My, my focus is suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Peter uh, Shimon, as it would be uh, in Hebrew, or Simon, uh, you know him to be a part of the inner circle of the 12 disciples, if you're a Bible reader. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen on Peter? Amen. Amen. Be a witness that Peter was one of the 12 disciples. Yes. Amen. The Bible lets us know that that man Peter, now, who was once a fisherman, and I, I, I've never met someone who made their living fishing. But, but I saw some movies and it's sort of a rough character. Yeah. Uh, rough around the edges as it were. But, but nevertheless the Bible said when he made his confession yeah. Yeah. that Jesus was the Messiah God changed his name from Shimon to Kephas. God likes to change folks names Amen. when the days happen. When he gets ready to do things in your life, your title might change. Your last name might change. Can I get an amen? amen. God don't mind changing somebody's name. He has power to do it. Yes. I like it because the Bible says God changed his name. Yes. God did this. He changed his name to Kephas, which in Aramaic means rock. Mm -hmm. Now, later on, it translates in the Greek, Petros, and it trickles on down to us, and we just yes. call him good old Peter. Yes. Yes. I said, thank God for Brother Peter. So in Matthew 16, Jesus promised to him that he would become uh, the leader amongst the apostles. Uh, and can infer all the time that in the church that we're all, many of the leadership was elders. We're all elders. I, yes. I, I was engaging in an individual this past weekend, and, and, and I addressed him as minister. And they said, no, 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 I'm not a minister now. I'm an elder. But Amen. that person doesn't understand how the church works. Yeah. A child of God never stops being a minister. Uh, if you decide to take on one of those crazy New York titles like Archbishop, God will always regard you as a minister. 
It is a servant, and Jesus has made it plain. Let he that or she that is greatest in the kingdom mm -hmm. be a servant. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, I'm a minister. Yes. 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 Ordained self. We are all ministers. Yes. We don't want to remove the fact that God has called us to serve. Yes. Uh, but nevertheless, amongst leadership, there had to be a leader amongst leaders. So God let him know he would be a leader amongst the apostles to guide this new messianic or this Christian kingdom, this community that God had worked out mm -hmm. through Jesus. You know? yes. And if you find out that God made true on those promises, if you read the first ten books of Acts, mm -hmm. Peter was the leader of the church of Jerusalem. Amen. Eventually, Brother Peter was called to carry this good news beyond the borders of Israel. Yes. Sometimes God likes to stretch us to see mm -hmm. how far we can go. He likes to call us outside of our comfort zone. Amen. You know, I, I have to take uh, awareness of how comfortable I'm getting. Because yeah. God has not called us Jesus. to a life of comfortability. I know that's Can I get an amen? Yes. amen? He has called us to a life of service. Yes. Sometimes service yes. means getting your yes. hands a little dirty. Yes. It means getting down in the trenches a little bit, doing something that won't nobody else do. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. God called him eventually past the borders of Israel. Mm -hmm. And this letter is written decades into that mission uh, in the wider Roman world. Uh, we discover at the conclusion of the letter that, of course, Peter is in Rome, which he called Babylon. And we learn that uh, he was commissioned, he, he commissioned this letter, but it was actually composed by a man named Sylvanus. Um, when we get ready to talk about Bible individuals, we don't mention Sylvanus too much. But Sylvanus wrote this letter, is what Peter said. Apparently, he was a co worker of Peter. It's important to realize that behind every good man is a good woman. Yes. Behind every good woman is a good man. Amen. Behind every established and strong adult, many times, is a parent who guided and instructed them, a yes. grandmother, a grandfather, yes. that gave them the things that they needed to be what they needed to be in society. Yes. We're talking about the players behind the scenes. Amen. A lot of times so that our praise and our understanding is directed in the right way. Yes. Uh, we want uh, to get a full understanding that the body has many members. Yes. Peter is writing this letter to the church and to us to encourage them. This is an encouraging message this morning. In the midst of their suffering, uh, and it explains the letters designed and the themes. And a lot of times when we open up the Bible, we start reading, we really don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm just reading and I'm reading about suffering and different things. But it's important to understand the whole picture, right? uh, to figure out what's going on. You know, And in movies, they have trailers. And I'm one of those people who, before I even start that hour and a half or two hours, I need to see the trailer because the trailer will let me know if I want to waste my time here. What it does is give you a snapshot right. or an overview uh, of, of the movie. Amen. So you know right away, I can watch this with the children. I can't watch this with the children. Right. I don't want to watch this at all. Or I definitely want to see that. Yes. So, so what we want to do is give a brief overview uh, today of First Peter, his first letter. Uh, Peter first affirms that these individuals that he's writing to and us this morning are a part of a new family. And because we are a part of a new family, we have a new identity. Yes. Uh, many of us have ran into people and individuals who took us in. Uh, just was immediately drawn to us. And you are a member, of, you're my sister, you're my brother. Uh, there, that love was present. Uh, that service was present. Yes. That spirit of God was present that made you feel welcome into that family. And because you was identified with them, you had a new identity yourself. Yes. You said, you know, such and such, they know this family. They're close mm -hmm. to this family. They have the favor. They got the protection. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got some of that character. Surely's rubbing off of that family. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. Well, yeah. Peter wants them to know and understand that be being a Christian it's going to be tough for some of y'all this morning. It requires a new identity. Yes. Amen. <laughs> uh, a new identity. Uh, not that I'm going to formulate it in the whole mind, but something that is going to come forth from the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Uh, a new identity. Yeah. And these persecuted Christians, it will help them see now 
suffering in this kingdom that seems to be upside down. Yeah. Uh, what good in the world seems to be bad in the kingdom. <laughs> and vice versa. We call it an upside down kingdom. Yes. When God gets ready to move in our lives, when he gets ready to save. Remember we talked last week, and the Lord said, beware when all men praise you. Yeah. Uh, he said, woe unto them. Yeah. So we understand that these Christians are new Christians. They are a part of a new family that God has made them anew. So Peter opens uh, the, by greeting these churches in Asia Minor, modern day Turkey, as an Old Testament, uh, he uses an Old Testament adage, chosen people of God. Yes. Now, these readers would understand right away the, the, this adage that these names were to be assigned to Old Testament Israel. Uh, and yet he is using them. He makes clear throughout the letter that these Christians he's writing to are Gentile. Uh, they are non-Jews. But here he describes them with Old Testament phrases from Genesis 18 and also Genesis 23 that describe at that time how God's chosen people of Israel, the family of Abraham, who was himself an exile and wanderer. Well, listen now. He, he is relating their lives of suffering and the Christian life that seems to be often strange and odd and surely persecuted that we have someone to look back on as a part of our family, Abraham who himself was an exile in the wanderer. Peter re repeats uh, this relationship of the New Testament saints with the Old Testament saints throughout this letter. He wants us to understand this morning that uh, the suffering and our suffering as we go through, uh, that we see that through Jesus we now belong to the family of Abraham. Well, that's important to understand. Thank you. Uh, I say it all the time. We are Abraham's seed. I believe that's Galatians 3. Uh, that we are part of Abraham's seed. So that ought to make you go back and find out what are the promises of Abraham's seed. Right. What are the promises to Israel? Yes. Because those promises are great. Those promises are awesome. Those promises are unparalleled, and those promises are unmatched. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. He repeats it. He wants them to understand wholeheartedly uh, that their suffering has a purpose. Uh, in your Christian walk, if you are living any kind of Christian walk, if you are trying at all, if you have not laid your hands down, if you have not thrown your hands up and quit, you are going to be misunderstood. You are going to be mistreated uh, in your Christian faith. And these Christians have just that. They are looking for their true home, just like Israel was in the promised land. We are not looking for a physical place, but we are looking for a city not made with hands that God has made high above the heavens. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. So this family has a new identity, and Peter lets us know that as God's beloved children, uh, who we have a new hope of a world reborn by God's love. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Uh, and now that we have been reborn by God's love, uh, uh, and we look to Jesus who returns as our king. Yes. Uh, we have this hope. And suffering and persecution, we find out, actually becomes a strange gift in the Christian life. Mm -hmm. uh, the world will not regard suffering as a gift. But Peter lets us know that suffering serves things that nothing can do. Uh, he reminds the believers of their true home. Yes. Uh, we are pilgrims here. Yes. We're just sojourners here. We're just passing through here amen. on to another place. All right. amen. Amen. It's important weekly, monthly, year after year, day after day, that you wrap your mind around the fact that you are not of this world. Amen. Uh, that we are otherworldly, that we have a home that we are going to far above the heaven. So, Peter tells them, just like the Israelites now, uh, that who left Egypt, that we being a part of that family, are to gird up their minds. Remember, when they got ready to leave Israel, he told them to gird themselves up. Uh, what does gird mean? It means to prepare to get ready to go. All right, all right. Uh, getting ready to go on a date or, or going out to eat or something, I, I assumed that there would be some things that you would do. Amen. Make sure we all put on a little lipstick. Uh, my daughter, she, she ain't going on a date for another 20 or 30 years. <laughs> but if she was, 20 or 30 years, 
she would maybe put on a little lipstick. She would maybe get her little uh, eyebrows done and get them plucked or whatever, but she would do something to get ready uh, to, to, to head on out. All right. So, so Peter lets them know that, that because God has saved us, uh, that we are supposed to live like saved folk. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So that they are the holy people of God. We are journeying through a wilderness. Yes. Sometimes, I don't think we understand that we're in a wilderness. Mm -hmm. I ask people, you know, Peter says you shouldn't act like some strange thing happened to you. Right. I ask people, they said, I'm dealing with all kinds of stuff. Pastor, pray for me. I said, I know you are. We are pilgrims here. We are passing through here. This is a spiritual wilderness here. You're going to be tried here. You're going to be tempted here. You're going to be tripped up. Can I get an amen? Yes. You're going to be tripped up here. Uh, don't act as if some strange thing happened. Is what Peter said. That's really a harsh word for somebody who's suffering. It's almost like this is what we've been dealt. Right. Uh, we are dealing with these spiritual battles, spiritual life, but nevertheless, we are to leave behind the former way of life. Yes. If you recall, they didn't take anything coming out of Egypt, save a few instruments of gold that they would be used in the destruction of the temple uh, and the tabernacle. Yes. So, in light of what God has done, they are to gird up their minds. So yes. He says that they are a holy people of God who are now journeying through a wilderness. He said they are the people of the new exodus now. There was an Old Testament exodus, mm -hmm. and there's a New Testament exodus who have not been redeemed by the blood of a pastor lamb, mm -hmm. but have been redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. 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 They are amen. the people not of the old covenant. We are the people of a new covenant, uh, ratified in Christ's blood. And we have God's word deep inside of us, restoring our hearts daily, renewing our minds. Uh, Peter lets us know that we are the new temple yes. of God. The old temple was the old tabernacle, a place Solomon built, and Moses erected. Uh, but Peter says, now on this side of the cross, we are the temple. Yes. Uh, we understood that Old Testament temple to be a place where the Shekinah glory came down. Mm -hmm. uh, we're interested in where God manifested his yes. power. Yes. Now you say, where is the temple today? But the Bible lets us know that we are the temple of God. All right. God dwells inside of us. Yes. Don't you ever forget that. All right. yeah. His power is inside of you. Yes. Thank not you, Jesus. So that we might act crazy and odd and, 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 and strange, but we may have the power that gives us self-control, yes. self-discipline, sound Lord. mind, power, love, and self-discipline. All right. Paul says, Timothy. So what's these images? God, through Peter, is placing suffering within a brand new story. Okay. Uh, and that's what I want you to understand today. That your suffering this morning has been placed in the confines of a new picture. Yes. Now, a lot of times we want it to go out the window. Now, we want it to go away. But, but through this Christian faith, we show, show that persecution and suffering can bring clarity in our mission in the world. How? To bear witness to God's mercy. Yes. Even among the nations. Peter encourages uh, us and them to submit. He, he, he encourages them to submit back then to Roman rule. Mm -hmm. Even though it, it could be oppressive, that he acknowledges that their persecution and their suffering was unjust at that time, but he encouraged them to not be violently resistant. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, it's important that we encourage uh, the saints of God not to be violently resistant. Okay. Uh, they've got protesting going on, and every time something happens at the state house, they get to tear stuff up. Mm -hmm. But I sure hope to God we don't see nobody from Berea down there tossing the bottle. Hey, hey, man. Man. Hey, man. All this you know, we are not supposed to be <laughs> violently resistant. I get an amen. 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 I don't know if some of y'all have totally convinced. <laughs> it doesn't solve anything, is what Peter lets us know. And it betrays the teaching of Jesus. All right. Yes. Yes. Put that bottle away. Go and toss it into the trash can. <laughs> Peter highlights a difficult situation that Christian slaves and wives face when they lived in a Roman household at this time. And all these things parlay over to today. Uh, were the patriarch of a house who, if they didn't follow Jesus, he was, it was expected that everyone in that house should submit to him, even worship his gods. Mm -hmm. And P 
Peter is aware and that giving allegiance to Jesus often demonstrates or creates division. So he says it's true all Christians, including Roman wives and slaves, they had been fully liberated at this time uh, by Christ, but they were to demonstrate the freedom, not through rebellion, uh, not bucking against their husbands or their wives, but by resisting the same way that Jesus did through showing love and generosity. Okay. Uh, amen. Uh, yes. Love and generosity is how we resist. Yes. All right. Said, that don't sound like strong weapons. I need to raise my voice. I can cuss somebody out. No, no, no. Love and generosity. Amen. 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 Different than the Roman neighbors who uh, uh, treated their wives as slaves often and beneath them. He says, yes. now, as a Christian, you are to regard her as equal before you. Yes. And Amen. Really, uh, yes. The same honor and respect. Amen. 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 Peter is hopeful that this imitation of Christ's love, this upside-down love, this upside-down kingdom love, will give power to their word. Uh, as a, a witness to God's mercy and show people the beautiful truth about the way of Christ. All right. Uh, remember, Jesus was unfairly persecuted, mm -hmm. uh, murdered yes. by corrupt human power. Yes. But in reality, he was dying for the sins uh, of his enemies. Amen. After Amen. he was vindicated, resurrected, and seated at the right hand of power. All right. All right. I wonder if you can see anything good Lord. on the other Thank side you. of what you're going through. Lord. Amen. 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 So after you suffered a while now, yes. Amen. God wants to establish you and strengthen you and make you perfect. But you have to go through suffering in order to get uh, to the perfection. All right. Yes. Yes. Uh, Jesus. Peter, in his foreshadowing, shows how baptism points to the vindication of Jesus. Uh, uh, followers like Noah, we have been through saved waters. Uh, Christ's death and resurrection, uh, how he was murdered, and how he was raised uh, for our future vindication and our exaltation. So we ought to give God thanks for what God has done. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, Peter uh, recalls Jesus' word that his disciples should consider it an honor, remember, and a joy to be persecuted. Amen. I call one a New Testament event where the Bible says they uh, counted, it, counted it good that they had been uh, suffered for Christ's sake. Okay. Uh, that is the attitude that we want to have this morning. Amen. Uh, that whatever we suffer, whatever we go through, we have did it for Christ's sake. All right. It doesn't matter if it's sickness, if, if, if it's uh, uh, monetary, if it's financial, whatever we go through, that whatever we do, we gird up with a Christian mind and with a Christian faith and with Christian character that someone else is blessed. And I always point out the importance of your Christian witness amongst even people that you're around every day. Yes. The yes. biggest impact on the people closest to you is you. Yes. Uh, you can turn the whole tide of a house. Remember Obed Eden? You can turn the tide of a whole house by how you behave. All right. Amen. Your character and your Christian character can turn around a family. Amen. 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 Okay. A team. Uh, that's where God wants us to be. Um, so we want to have that same uh, flagship of Christian faith wherever we go so that we are being light. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever we go. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Peter concludes uh, his letter overall with a prayer for divine strength. And he sent a greeting from the church in Rome, which he called Babylon again, uh, adopting, uh, Peter uh, adopting here is the tra tradition of the Old Testament prophets for whom the name Babylon became an archetype. So that is understanding there when we get ready to read Babylon. You see, he is meaning Rome. But let's look at the text and let's work it out and then we'll head home. Now, this is what Peter lets us know that number one, uh, it is by Christ Jesus uh, that we have been saved uh, by which we will receive this eternal glory. Yeah. Uh, everything that we have in God, everything that we seek to in this life comes by Christ Jesus. All right, preach it now. Virtue, not a, a mere knowledge of him now, okay. but with a union that comes through faith in Jesus. Amen. All right. Being tied to him, all of our blessings, 
even the suffering that we go through has been by Christ Jesus. Praise God. A lot of times we blame it on the enemy. Get that devil off of me. Amen. No, no, no. God has ordained suffering in our lives now. It is by Christ Jesus. He is guarding the process. He is watching us. He is making sure that we shall not fail. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that in all our affliction, he was afflicted. Good. That's in Isaiah. Uh, the Bible says that after we have suffered a while, um, all the time, this is a short comparison in what comes after. A lot of times, we suffering can seem like a lifetime. That's true. It, it can seem like it'll never end. Uh, some of us, our, our biggest suffering is money. You know, we, we want the money to flow. And we don't see any value of, of having a little. Amen. We don't see God working anything out in our propensity to spend and blow and not have it. But nevertheless, uh, time is not valued and seen the same way by God that it is by us. Okay. Peter writes in his second letter, he says, Beloved, do not forget this one day. That the Lord to the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Some may count slackness, but is long suffering for us, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Amen. God amen. doesn't see time uh, like we do. And a lot of times in our minds, we think God needs to come and deliver right away. But but just keep in mind that God is working on a different time part altogether. All right. And Amen. his time is far greater than ours. Amen. And God Amen. said that he, in his word that he wants to establish us. Yes. He wants to establish okay. us. Okay. Now, it's not established. It's established. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was established, it means it was coming out of something. Mm -hmm. It's important to understand yes. that even in our self-righteousness, yes. that what God is wanting to do is create something new inside. All right. Yes. Yes. Amen. He Amen. wants to establish us altogether, yes. not from the outside, but from the inside, you right. can establish it. That nothing might shake it through this process. He says he wants to strengthen us that we may be able to overcome all the forces uh, that are brought against us. Preach it now. He Preach wants it. to Come settle on. us, to give us a foundation in Christ that we may not be shaken. We may not right. be moved. Right. He Thank wants you. to strengthen us. This is what God wants to do yes. in our lives. All right. Uh, it seems like a strange thing, but but yes. through all these things, I found out through all my suffering, through my ups and my downs, yes. through all my struggles in life, that when I came through, I was strong. Amen. 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 The person I used to be. Through addiction, through struggle, right. through downfalls, through yeah, bankruptcies and not having it, and divorces and death, right. that God has stricken me to all these Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So that yes, the have. things that affect others don't affect me. All right. Like they do yeah. Thank you, because Lord. God has stricken me. Yes. And lastly, God wants to make us perfect. Yes. Uh, he wants to make us perfect. It's important to understand that one day we will be perfect. Thank you, Lord. We will not have any struggles. We will Amen. not have any Hallelujah. sin. That God's ultimate work in us is just to perfect. Thank you, Lord. You may seem broken now, but uh, you may seem unfit for God's work. Yeah. In your mind, you ain't ready to do nothing for God. But I want to know oh, that God has called me in from the beginning. That's right. And that His work of sanctification in you will not cease. Yeah. And he Hallelujah. knows uh, where you're from, and He knows where He's taking you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He wants to make you perfect. That yeah. No defense. May remain oh, in you. Thank you, Lord. It's the God of all grace that has done it. Yes. He wants to establish us as Christians. Preaching And he wants to do all of this. After your suffering. Hallelujah. Yes. After you have suffered. All right. We, we have in our minds a timeline. Uh -huh. The Bible says men plan, Hallelujah. but God's will prevail. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Listen, we plan, God will prevail. Amen. I've tried to put together a timeline over and over for the things that God is doing. Mm -hmm. And it never works. Come on now. I'm getting this at this time. This is what happened at this time. All right. I'm break free at this time. Uh -huh. come do it. It, it, it never lines up. Right. A thousand years is our day to the Lord. A day right. is a thousand years. He's not working on your clock. Right? Thank you, Jesus. He's working on the eternal clock. Okay. Right? And in the confines of all God has done, He has ordained suffering in the life not to destroy you. Okay. Amen. But Thank to make you, you stronger. Yeah. Make you stronger. Thank you. Remember, Jesus. God says, He who the Lord loveth, He who does what? Chases. 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 Yes. Yes. He chases. Yes, He chases. 
Yeah. Same way with the father, same way with the mother. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we got to give on these kids sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not because we hate them, because yes. we love them. Right. We want them to be everything that they can be. Right. You know, but I found out that as grown adults, say folks, we can act like children. Amen. We can be very dismissive when it comes to suffering. Yes. We, we can be very dismissive when it comes to discipline. Mm -hmm. And, and I, read, I heard one preacher say that we ain't disciplined uh, outside of, uh, of what we have called for. Uh -huh. And I don't know if that's altogether true, but, but I've realized that I can purposely be disobedient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, the Bible speaks of sins and transgressions and iniquity. They're not all the same thing. Sin is rebellion. It's just a general opposition to what God has said. Transgression means to cross a clear line. Mm -hmm. You saw it. You crossed it. Yeah. Iniquity means pre premeditated sin. Remember David? Remember how Amen. David plotted against Uriah? Yeah. He sat down and wrote the whole plan out, played it out. So, so we can sin. We can transgress. Right. And we can, uh, we can have iniquities in our lives. Right. Amen. You know, but but all oh, through all these things, God's grace and mercy has wow. reigned through our lives. Yes. Yes. All right. you know, David is a great example of someone who, who God, despite his struggles in life, blessed. Yes. yes. He was the greatest king in Israel. Mm -hmm. he was murder, second degree murder. He was an adulterer mm -hmm. at a time. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is, what can God do for you? <laughs> Amen. What can God do for you? Amen. Amen. What can God do for you? The same. That's right. And even more. Yeah. And in our minds, we have to understand that you know God is not working on our clock. Right. All right. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wish some days that I could wake up and just be this perfect person. That's what. That's my hope. Yeah. And my hope is real. But I'm. I'm thinking. I wish it could happen in this life. I wish I could just wake up and be a perfect person. Mm -hmm. That every text that I send out would be perfect. But that don't work. Right. Every every conversation I could walk away with, say I said everything right there. Mm -hmm. that, that everything I do in my life, and I didn't have no issues last week. I, some days I just want to get. Some weeks I just want to get out of that week. Mm -hmm. So boy, I failed mm -hmm. you miserably. Let's just get to the next week. I ain't thinking about that. Amen. I mean, they, you don't think like we do. Mm -hmm. You know, we can get so caught up in, in our minds. Thinking that we have pleased God with something other than faith, but, but without faith it's impossible to please God. Amen. Amen. He wants to establish us, strengthen us, and make us perfect. And once you understand the divine order of how God works, you look differently at the things that you go through. Mm -hmm. You stop trying to get this before that. Mm -hmm. You understand that God has a plan, a wise plan, even for the child of God. Amen. Amen. And that's why justification came before sanctification. Mm -hmm. He wanted you to know before he called you to a holy life that it was the cross of Calvary to save you. Yes. And nothing yes. can change that. Yes. Right. Now, in light of the cross, mm -hmm. as obedient children, live your life, you know. Uh, but we thank God for his word this morning. Let's Amen. give him a Amen. Amen. After you have suffered a while, yes. that is a promise from God. Yes. yes. A promise from God. That after you have suffered a while, he was established, yes. strengthened, yes. and made you Amen, amen. You yes. are not who you're going to be. Not even in this life, five, ten years. Yes. That you're going to be something different. Yes. And, and that is a great uh, confidence. Yes. Sometimes I'll look at older men and I'll say, oh, I wish I could be where he is. I can't be there, man. Yeah. I'm 46. Come see me at 66, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I may have some more patience. Can, can I get it? Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, God works some things out differently in me. Yes. Amen. You know, but in our mind, we, we say, oh, Lord, this can't be no good in all the stuff I'm going through. You know, I feel God. Mm. But we all feel God. Yes. You know, uh, a lot of times we sin without knowing. Amen. And that really drove all the joy for Luke this morning. Yeah, yeah. Well, we sin, what we do know is enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> talking about sin without knowing. Lord Jesus, just get right. Preach it. Preach it. The Lord's blood of Jesus. Oh, yes. Yeah. It'll wash his white as snow. Yeah. What Isaiah said, he said, though your sins be a scarlet. Uh, uh, scarlet red is like a dye, it's a reference to a dye that gets on a cloth. Mm -hmm. You can't get that out. You can't get it out. Mm -hmm. it, it's just there, it's done. And it has forever stained it. 
Because the Bible says the blood of Jesus can remove yes. the stain of sin from the life of the believer. And, and if we're just patient, that's what we're going to experience one day. We can't imagine a sinless life. It's hard to imagine, but one day it's coming. Yes. Amen. Because we are in essence a spirit. We're going to put off this old body. God will give us a glorified body. Yes. Don't want to see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's going to be a glorious day. Yes. Uh, this is Thessalonians says uh, we shall be caught up to meet him in the rapture. Yes. And, and though the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. They didn't get up first. They've been there like that long. Yes. <laughs> but the dead in Christ gets to rise up first. Yes. And then those that remain, if we're still around, we, we're going to be caught up in the air with him. Yeah. And we've been studying in Revelation about eschatology and end times, and it's a good study. Amen. And it lets us know that, that we go to heaven, then we come back with Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Go up with him, and then come on back with him yes. for that thousand-year millennial yes. reign. You know, Amen. it's important to understand what our future is. Yes. Yes. And it, you ought to have a, a desire, you know, to understand what God is going to do for us in the future. And what a blessing, you know. What what a, what a tremendous blessing. We can't put in perspective. That's what Paul said. That I reckon. That's an accounting term. He said, "I reckon that the suffering of the present time are not worthy to be compared." You know, somebody tells you, you ain't worthy, it makes you sit up wrong with you. You know, but what he's saying that it's not even close. What we go through in our struggles in life ain't worthy to be compared to the glory. That shall be revealed. That's a strong word, glory. He said, God is going to produce glory in me, yes. yes. Amen. Glory. Yes. Glory. glory. And you, you can look up the etymology for that word, glory. Amen. And that's what God's going to work out in each one of us. So we're grateful for all God has done. This time we're going to get prepared to give this morning. Paul said, The Lord loves the cheerful giver that we ought to give. Yes. Cheerfully, Amen. not begrudgingly. Yes. yes. Amen. You didn't ask for it begrudgingly, did you? I said, Lord, hit me with something good. Don't give me the kind of jingles. Give me the kind of folds. And he did it, didn't he? Yes. He did it. Amen. Amen. And sometimes the more money we make, the less we want to give. We yes, get right. the love of the money. So the school of all evil. He said, Oh, Lord, I could give back when I made two fifty a week. But now that I'm making a grand a week, I can't give like that. No, no, no. no. No, no, no. God loves a cheerful giver. Yes, God loves to give unto the Lord heartily. He might give it back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. You know, Amen. Shall he give unto your bosom? In, in, the old, in the old days, when Jesus was around, they would take wheat and stuff it down in a bag, a cloth bag. And then they would take more wheat and stuff it down. So when you open it up, it would just come up, flow over. That's what he's talking about. Okay. That, that's the picture he's giving. He said, you ever have one of those blessings that say, my God, I put my in my pocket. I never put it down there. That's what God does. Amen. When, when you give unto him, yeah. he gives it back, yeah. press down, yeah. shake it together. Because you've got to shake yeah. it to get rid of the air pockets. Yeah. And press down, it ain't running. Amen. 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 No one can give like that. Right. Two fairy can't give like that. Two, hey, two hey. fairy give two hundred dollars. God give me a pension plan. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God give you a whole bunch of money. Yes. I'll give you a good, a good report at the doctor's office. Yes. That's what God will do. Yes. Lord, I, I, I get happy when I think about God. Yes. He, he's been good to me. Amen. I'll tell you what. I just, I could go on and on. Like anyone else, I will take up the time and got all the things God has done and delivered me. But you know, before I came to Muncie in 2012, I, I was in a bad place. I didn't have no job. I was serving in ministry, didn't have a car, didn't have a place to live, Jesus. didn't have no job. Jesus. I had kids that I needed to take care of. And when I came to Muncie in 2012, God just started lining things out. Right. But I had to come out yes. from a familiar place. Yeah. Amen. And when I came out from a familiar place, God blessed me. Remember when Abraham, the father of our faith, yes. the Bible said God came to him after he killed the king, uh, Shed and Omar, and the evil kings, after he acted in obedience and faith, God said, God bless him. He said, I am your shield, and thy exceeding great reward. When we move on faith, God wants to, faith has action. Don't ever let faith is up in your head. Faith moves your feet. It gets you to the house of God. Yes. Faith gets you away from places you ought not to be. Right. Faith is not an abstract thing. It, it's a real thing. Yes. But faith is a substance. Yes. Yes. 
But when, when you would be in the fighting game, or when you would get the guy close to death, then a voice would come on there and say, finish him. Mortal combat. <laughs> Mortal combat. <laughs> That's what the devil wants to do. Yeah. Not when you're talking to Jesus. Finish him. He ain't no good. Yeah. The Bible says he, can, he, he is accusing us day and night in heaven before God. But God has not listened. The bruised reed he shall not break. Smoking flax he shall not quench. He you, has committed himself Ooh, to you. Thank you for your mercy, you. Lord. Yes. Thank you. I'm grateful for telling you because I, I, I try to keep a straight line, but I'm not perfect. And when I go straight, God is right there. When I go left, he's right there. He is a friend to the friendless. Yes. He is a brother born for a time to the my mother used to say he's the lily of the valley. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Now, it's hard to see anything good when you're down. Oh, man. But if you look, you'll find Jesus is always there. Oh, even when you go through, yeah. even when you fail, even yeah. when you struggle, yeah. even when folks are talking about you and calling you all kind of stuff and say you're done oh, and you're finished, they don't yes. understand that the God of all grace yes. is established and yes. strengthened yes. so he might make it yes. That's good yes, theology. Thank right you, there. Jesus. Thank you. What an encouragement. Yes, he, he, what a he, word. He what an encouragement. Yes. yes. I never get down. I shake that off. Mm. I shake the negative thoughts off about myself. Amen. I say, God is working in me. Yes. Because God is working in me. Yes. 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 desire is to do his good pleasure. Yes. Yes. God thank you, Jesus. And if this is his time, it's his time. Yeah. yeah. If I overcome this week, I overcome. Mm. If I don't, it's, it's his time. I know that's I right. I can't do nothing without God. Jesus. And me that's in my flesh, Paul said, well, no good thing. No good thing. No and this flesh is still here. Last time I checked, yeah. you know, I'm not perfect. I have to remind my wife and I'm not perfect. You know, close. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> I'm I'm not right. Right. I'm I'm close. Lord Jesus. <laughs> But oh, yeah. God's going to make me perfect one day. Yeah. He'll be laughing yeah. at y'all. Yeah. He'll be laughing at me. <laughs> oh, Lord, I thank God for his word. Yes. yes. His word is good. Let's pray and we'll give. Yes. Father God, we thank you for your word this morning. Oh, thank you, Thank Jesus. you for an opportunity to fellowship with the saints. Yes. We ask you to bless every brother here, every sister here, yes. every child. Thank we ask you for a mutual fellowship, a communion amongst the saints, a common thread of love and spirit, that we might do all these things in, in order to please God in reverence to you, who you are, what you have done. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word. Help us to understand the divine discipline of suffering, that yes. it is producing something greater in us. Just as gold must be tried in the fire, our faith far more precious than gold. Yeah! Hallelujah. 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 We thank you for this faith that we have. Give us strength. Forgive us our sins. We walk anew today. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning, fresh every evening. Thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. That never ceases. Unending. And great is thy faithfulness this morning. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We love you because you first loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time we come and give.
Okay, let's stand. We're going to dismiss. We're going to dismiss with a prayer for Sister Kay Sims, family of Bishop Abrams, who's in the hospital, dealing with some things today. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity in your house. We thank you for forgiveness. We thank you for love, encouragement, and strength that comes through your word. We just ask you to bless each and every one of us that we might be strengthened, established, Lord Jesus, and made perfect through the process of our salvation. We thank you that you have promised it. We ask you to remember Sister Kay and her whole family. Touch her body now and give her healing at this hour, at this moment. She might have a testimony to the faithfulness of God. We know that all things work together for the good of them who love God and who are called according to your purpose. We ask that we be convened back here at the same time in the precious name of Jesus. Everyone with uplifted hands, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. All right, love you. God bless you. Oh,